Hey, travel fam, it's Darian, and welcome back to I Need Travel Therapy. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have an awesome episode. We are going to be doing a next stop in Washington and hearing all about what Washington's like. It's been a really hot travel area. Lots of people are wanting to go there, so we're really excited to hear a little bit more about it. Um, Today, we're going to be talking to Stephanie. So a little bit about Stephanie. She's a solo traveling PT currently living in Moses Lake, Washington. She is originally from Illinois and has been a traveler for just under a year. She has taken assignments in New Mexico, Texas, and Washington so far and hopes to get up to Alaska next summer. She spends most of her time getting outside to hike, camp, fish, or hunt, and loves getting involved in the town she moves to. Let's get started with this episode. Hey, Stephanie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Good to be here. Hi, we're so excited to have you on today to hear all about your travel experience. So (laughs) could you start off right off the bat just telling us a little bit about um, what had you originally interested in travel therapy and kind of how you got started on this journey? Yeah, so actually in PT school, we had a traveler that came and talked to our class um, and that right away got me a little interested. I've been traveling kind of on my own ever since high school. I've, I think, only lived in the same place for like two years in a row at most since high school. So wow, I knew that travel was kind of where I wanted to go, but I wasn't exactly sure if that's how I wanted to start out straight from school because I heard some bad rumors about it and some good ones <laughs> at the same time. Um, so I was looking into it. I really liked my last clinical placement in school. So I was trying to decide between travel or staying in Colorado possibly. And I just yeah. decided I needed to go with it and start traveling right away. And I am so happy I did. Yes. But yeah. It's been a great, great experience so far. Had most of your moving around or traveling, I guess, been from high school um, up through college, been like in the United States, or were you doing a lot of like international travel too? Or was it like you're excited to be able to check out more of the U.S.? Yeah, it was all in the U.S. Um, ever since high school, I went I went straight from high school to undergrad where I played volleyball. So I traveled out of state for that. And then okay. I stopped playing volleyball, moved to Colorado to finish up my undergrad. And then from there, gosh, I was in Wisconsin for a year and then went way over to New Jersey for PT school. And nice. then in PT school, I decided to do a lot of contracts, or not contracts, but clinical rotations outside of the state because I knew I wanted to be elsewhere. So, so you kind of lived place. all over at this point. Yes. Wisconsin and New Jersey are kind of like, you know, polar opposites in For comparison sure. to the states and the experience <laughs> and people are yep. different. And exactly. <laughs> I'm from Minnesota, so Wisconsin's close to my heart. <laughs> exactly. And I'm from Illinois, so my sister yeah, lives see. in Wisconsin. So. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. when I go to the East Coast, I'm like, this is just a little too crazy for me. <laughs> so different. Yeah, it but, is. <laughs> yeah. It's cool to see though. Like I'm very for happy sure. I experienced that in school because I would I probably wouldn't have been out there otherwise. Yeah. So that was neat. No, for sure. I mean, that's kind of the beautiful thing about it. Um and being able to it sounds like you traveled for your clinicals as well, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. So um can you tell us uh where you've been thus far on assignment? Yes. So I actually have only been traveling since October of last year. Okay. I'm still very new to travel PT, but my first contract was in Clovis, New Mexico, which is like very eastern New Mexico, probably 20 minutes away from Texas. Wow. And then my second contract was in southeast Texas, and that was right across the border to Louisiana, actually. So yeah. I feel like I've stayed on the eastern side of all of these states, and then right yeah. now I'm up in... <laughs> Right now I'm up in Washington and I'm on the eastern side of Washington, but it's kind of more centrally located than that. Okay. So you've been kind of on the western half of the country yes. for these assignments. Okay, I love great. I love the western states. So I think that's kind of where I'll end up bouncing around to all of these states out here. But we'll yeah. see. I don't know yet. People love the West. Ever like uh, travelers all the time like will just say, Hey, I just want to be on the west side of the country. Yep. You know, people love the Pacific Northwest, like where you're at right now. Exactly. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you more about that too. Um, as far as the assignments that you've had, you said you started in Clovis, New Mexico, and then you're in Eastern Texas. Now you're in Washington. Do you feel like each assignment and location you've been able to like kind of learn and grow as a clinician? I would say definitely. My first one, I think I was just so excited to start travel that I probably didn't ask the right questions before that assignment. (laughs) Um, So I learned a lot from that experience in general. I ended up stopping that contract at nine weeks, I think, when it was a 13-week contract. 
Um, I would say I've gotten a lot better with finding housing too. Mm -hmm. I definitely prefer to live on my own if I can. And right now I'm living in an awesome house on the water. So (laughs) I definitely got lucky out here. Um, But just asking the right people and I've used a lot of like the Facebook pages that the travelers are a part of. And I think that helps a lot too, other than Airbnb. Um, Yeah, those Facebook groups are awesome. I always suggest those too. So helpful. So helpful. Is there any ones in specific that you like to use? Um, I think I used for housing the travel gypsy nurse, Mm -hmm. I think is what it is. Um, and all I did was typed in for this contract, I typed in Moses Lake because I'd never heard of Moses Lake before. And I like have lived in Washington before, but I didn't know anyone that was down in this area at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just typed in Moses Lake and this lady commented on it from like three years ago on someone's post. And she was like, Hey, my husband and I are finishing up a house. And this was in like 2019. (laughs) And so I didn't see anything since then. And I messaged her back and was like, hey, is there any chance you guys are still renting out a room in your house? I'm actually yeah. moving to the area. And she was so down for it. She, they originally weren't going to, going to put their house up on the market at all for travelers or just in general. But they're like, hey, we'll have a phone call and yeah. see if it'd be a good fit for both of us. And we talked for like an hour and it was awesome. So. <laughs> It worked out that well. is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I always think it's funny. People sometimes don't think about that when they're first starting traveling, but travel nursing and travel therapy mm-hmm. is similar as far as like how long the contracts are and stuff. Exactly. But there's more travel nurses out there. So some of those Facebook groups are geared towards nursing. Yeah. So guys, if you're looking for housing, you can use the travel <laughs> nursing <laughs> housing too. It's the same. So helpful. <laughs> right? And then you can search, right? You can search mm-hmm. in the Facebook group and then you can also yep. post in there. So exactly. Yep. I always I try suggest to do it going all. that route because <laughs> there's a lot of people that really like renting to um, medical professionals mm-hmm. and maybe they don't have something on Airbnb because they mostly rent to medical professionals and things like that. So sometimes there's, you know, outlets on there that wouldn't be anywhere else that you could find. Yep. Yeah. It's been super helpful. I mean, I enjoy Airbnb, but Airbnb also jacks up the rates a little bit. So it's nice to kind of stay off of that if you can. For sure. Um, Something else I wanted to ask you about, if you don't mind, I know you said that your first assignment, you only stayed for nine weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, I always tell travelers that too. And I think they know that like something that goes along with travel is, you know, potentially there is risk for notice at some point, right? If you travel for over a year, a lot of times, you know, eventually you will get notice on some assignment, right? Mm -hmm. But I always think it's important for travelers to know too, that they can also put in notice if maybe a facility isn't a good fit, um, clinically, ethically, whatever the, you know, case is. Um, But can you tell us a little bit about what that process was like when, you know, you had to put in notice, it sounds like? Yeah. So I actually did it all through my recruiter, Um, Mm -hmm. I just let her know, Hey, this is what's going on. It's not kind of what I was expecting. I know I probably jumped the gun coming onto this assignment just because Mm -hmm. I was so excited. COVID was happening. I was nervous about finding a job, all of that. So I just talked to my recruiter and they were the ones that actually talked to the clinical director slash boss. Um, and it was a super easy process that rotation or that contract actually, I think only had a 14 day notice. So two weeks, or actually it was less than that. I think sometimes it's 30 days, I think is a pretty prominent one for travel. Mm -hmm. So I think mine was 14 days. Um, and so I just let my recruiter know, and they were the ones that kind of contacted the company. And then I ended up talking with the head guy at the clinic and he was like, Hey, I understand that your recruiter said that you weren't possibly staying for the entire contract. Can we talk about it? And I did talk to him about it, but Mm -hmm. I just let him know that it wasn't the best fit for me and I wasn't super comfortable being there anymore. So I decided to stick with the two weeks. And I was nervous going into that too, because like as a new traveler, I didn't really know what to expect Um, putting in two weeks. I've never put in two weeks for any job in my life. Yeah, And I was like, shoot, are there going to be repercussions for this? Like, am I going to get in trouble by my travel company? Am I going to be able to travel after this? But there was, <laughs> yeah, nothing on that side yeah. of the spectrum. So, No, nice. I think it's important for people to know. And so I'm glad that you brought it up and said that because um, at the end of the day, like, you know, a 13-week assignment is pretty short, right? And so yeah. sometimes it's like... 
you know, there's certain things you can push through and then there's certain things where maybe it's just not the right move for you to mm-hmm. stay on. And I think yeah. knowing that, that people can do that if they need to, or if they really want to, it is out there. Yeah. It is an option. Facilities can do it to you if they choose to. And you also have the ability to do it, you know, making a habit out of doing it on every assignment, <laughs> maybe wouldn't be the best, yeah. right? but overall, like if you put a professional notice on, it doesn't look bad on you. You, so, I mean, you're still in good standing with the company, all of that stuff. I think it's important for people to know. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I wish I'm I would have known that going into you're it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So back to the locations that you've been. So you've been to a yeah. couple different places. Um, mm-hmm. What has been your favorite so far? Uh, I definitely like Washington the best so far. I mean, okay. the places that I was at before. So Clovis, New Mexico, I'm sure there's a lot more that there is to offer, but it's very flat and dry. Like you're living in the desert of New Mexico. Um, but it's a bigger town than I was expecting. I mm-hmm. honestly didn't hear about it until I moved out there. Um, but it was during the middle of COVID too, so everything was shut down. So that was pretty hard. Um, yeah. I ended up having a roommate there who had a good friend. And I ended up going every single weekend. We took a road trip like four to five hours away and went hiking every single weekend to different places in the state, which was amazing. Like I don't, Very cool. I honestly don't think I would have been able to stick that contract out longer than I did if it wasn't for traveling around on the weekends and doing the things I loved. So, yeah. Do you have any favorite spots in New Mexico? Ooh, I, gosh, what is it called? Putting you on the Um, spot. Cloudcroft, (laughs) Cloudcroft, New Mexico is beautiful. It's just a small mountain town. Very cute though. Um, There's just a lot of exploring you can do up there and some good hiking around the area. White Sands National Park is insane. I did that like right around Christmas time and I felt like I was sledding on the snow rather than the sand, which was cool. That's um, totally on my bucket list. I want to go there so, so bad. Beautiful. It's so pretty. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I did that. I did the Carlsbad Caverns. Um, gosh, there was a really good hike too, and I can't name it right now, but yeah. Um, yeah. There's just, well, that's awesome. there's really pretty places in New Mexico, but from where I was at, they were all four to five hours away. So okay, lots of driving well, on the weekends, but worth it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I love that though, like kind of road warrior mentality mm-hmm. that you can have when you're a traveler because Absolutely. you might be in a smaller town or maybe like not as much to do in your town. But if you're like excited about going camping or doing things on the weekend, mm-hmm. like there's so much to explore in that exactly. four to five hour radius. I bet there's tons of oh, stuff yeah. where you are. And it makes the week go by super fast too because you're already like planning ahead for the weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, okay, so you really have you enjoyed New Mexico, but that I wasn't did. your favorite spot. Okay, and then how it about was Texas? Not. Texas was awesome. Like I knew I would enjoy Texas, but yeah. I lived in a town of twelve hundred people, which is so tiny compared to what I'm used <laughs> to. Like I grew up in a town I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, so like a hundred and thirty thousand people I think in our yeah. town. And so going from that to twelve hundred, I was like, shoot, what am I getting myself into? It was like <laughs> It honestly was a complete culture shock driving into the town. I was like, I don't know. This is going to be a long, long... I was on an 18-week contract for that one. So I was like, wow, dang, okay. this is going to be a different one. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um, but it was awesome. I have never met such nice people in my life. Like uh, The Southern hospitality in Texas is no joke. Everyone's wow. so welcoming. They all ask you if you want iced tea when you walk in their house. <laughs> <laughs> but again, there wasn't a ton to do right in the area that I lived mm-hmm. in just because it was such a small town. But I met some awesome neighbors. There was a restaurant in our town that was pretty much like one of two restaurants. But on Saturday nights, they would do live music and you'd go over, have wine and beer, do the live music. And then one of my neighbors that I met through the little restaurant that evening or one of my first weekends there, they ended up having a shop in their side yard. And he was, the dad used to be in a band and had like all of his band stuff in his shop. So we'd go over there on Saturdays after the live music and listen to more live music. And (laughs) that was pretty much my weekend activity. It was so fun. That does sound super fun. (laughs) Yes. So just like immersing in the culture, I think I enjoy too. I love hearing that, like going to these small towns, I feel like it would be kind of daunting. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, everyone knows each other. They don't know yes. me. Are they going to like be nice to me? And I feel like I hear that a lot that people mm-hmm. are just super nice. They're excited about someone new coming in. Exactly. And you're obviously doing a great thing for the community by, you know, being a medical professional and going there. So, yeah, it was so fun. And 
like you definitely stick out like a sore thumb. They know you're not from there, but (laughs) it was awesome. (laughs) I enjoyed it a lot. And you definitely, you meet everyone in town because it's so small too, which was fun. Yeah. Well, the shining star of today's show is going to be Washington. So I'm excited that you said that's your favorite place. Yes. (laughs) So where were you located in Washington? Or you're in Washington right now. So where are you currently located? Yes. I am actually in eastern Washington in Moses Lake. So if you look on the map, it looks like it's more centrally located, but it's considered eastern Washington. I think okay. I think a lot of what is eastern Washington, a lot of people say like anything east of the Cascades is considered eastern. East um, of the Cascades. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I need to but, look at a map. Yeah, technically this is eastern <laughs> Washington. Um, but again, I didn't hear about it until I moved here. I asked a couple people because I've lived up in Spokane, Washington before. That's where my tax home is. Mm -hmm. Um, and I even asked people from up there and they're like, you want to go to Moses Lake? Like, are you kidding me? There's nothing to do there. And I was like, oh boy, this is great. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but my boss on the phone or the clinic manager on the phone basically sold it to me. He's like, Hey, there's tons of outdoors activities here. There's fishing. There's a huge lake that wraps around the town. Um, just a lot to do. And I was like, okay, well that sounds like me. So. Sold. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Doesn't so, take much, but it's it's been a good experience. So when you started looking for this assignment, had you decided like I want to look for assignments in Washington or? I was kind of everywhere still. Okay, I knew. I mean, I love Texas, and I was actually considering maybe finding another place in Texas, but it was in the middle of the summer, or starting to get to the summer. I don't mm-hmm. do well with humidity and heat, <laughs> so I was like, okay, yeah. maybe Texas is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> in the summer, at least. Um, so I knew I wanted to be back out by the mountains because when I was in Texas, I definitely missed the mountains. So I wanted to head in one of the western states, but I kind of looked all over the place. And then this yeah. one just happened to pop up. So Moses Lake, is that near mountains? Like, can you see the mountains from there? Or is it more of like a weekend It's trip? more of a weekend trip again. Um, okay. I would say you can get to cool places within like an hour and a half, which is awesome. Okay. And I can actually, so I live on the water right now, but on a clear day, I can see Mount Rainier, like the very peak of Mount Rainier from out my windows or off my balcony. So that's pretty sweet. So beautiful. Yes. I'm jealous. (laughs) And the sunsets here are insane. Yeah. You can't beat them. on the water too. How Mm -hmm. nice. And it reflects and it's so pretty. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay. So as far as, you know, you've been kind of all over. How would you describe the culture in Washington? Is that any different? Do you like feel different when you're there compared to some of these other places? I mean, definitely just having it be a bigger area than Texas. I think that Mm -hmm. was like the biggest thing coming from that small of a town out here because this is, I think, 24,000 people. So not huge, but definitely bigger than that last town was. Yeah. And I really like this size too, to be honest, because there's, it feels like there's a ton to do after coming from where I was just at, but it's not overwhelming. Um, but I will say this, the state's kind of like split in half, like everyone from the Western side of the state and then the Eastern side of the state state. And it's funny because people out here will talk about, oh, like the Westerners are coming over and <laughs> all of that. But a lot of people that are from the West side of the state, like Seattle area will come over and they're like, Hey, this is where I relax for the weekend and get away from city life. And I completely mm. understand that. Cause I know it's a lot faster paced out that way. And then out here, it's just kind of everyone relaxes. They have their RVs out. They have their boats out and they're going to the sand dunes on their four wheelers on the weekend. So yeah, it's pretty cool. The life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call them out there? Do they call them cabins or do people have like cabins or cottages or lake homes? I think or lake house. Yeah. Like lake like houses out here. The lake house. Mm-hmm. Cause there's a That's lot of houses on this water, but you can tell that people don't live here full time. Yeah. Okay. It's always interesting to me how they call them different. Like in Minnesota, we call them cabins. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then like on the East Coast, they call them cottages, yeah. you know? And so it's yeah. just different. I think it's just like houses out here. Oh, perfect. I think. <laughs> I didn't realize that, you know, being from Minnesota and growing up here, it is it is a huge part of the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people have lake homes or you've got like you know, a brother or sister or an aunt or an uncle, like, you know, where exactly. everyone congregates around. So it's cool to yeah. see these other communities. So it sounds like they do that there too. Yes. I'm pretty cool. sure that's a pretty big part of here because this is a little bit cheaper area to live than obviously out West in Seattle area. So I think a lot of people will come over and have a lake house up yeah. here and enjoy it on the weekends. Ah, lovely. Yes. Um, so what are some of your favorite activities to do in Washington? Oh man. 
just probably my favorite <laughs> activities in general or really anything outside. I love yeah. to camp, hike, fish. I'm getting into hunting. Um, yeah, a little bit of everything. Anything yeah. and everything outside. If I can just sit outside and read a book. A lot of times in the morning, I'll go outside, drink my coffee, have breakfast. And then even at night, I'll eat dinner out on the porch too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love Hunting. It. That sounds fun. Yes. So yeah. I, can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have been wanting to get into hunting for a little while. I actually met a couple of friends in other states that I've been in. I got to go pheasant hunting in Arizona before. Yeah. Um, I got to hang out with one of my friends in New Mexico when I was out there while they duck hunted. Um, I was supposed to go bear hunting here a few weekends ago and it didn't happen, which was kind of disappointing, but I'm still excited for the deer season comes up soon. And I decided not to do archery because I have my bow and I have um, a rifle too, but I will do rifle season for deer here. So that's next month. And then one of my coworkers is a big waterfall hunter. So ducks and geese and all of that. So I'm going to be out there a lot with him this winter and the rest of the fall. So, And how did you meet these people out there? I suppose you you said your tax home is in Spokane. So are these friends that you've made through your like assignment where you're at in Moses Lake or are these friends from before? (laughs) It's a little bit of everything. So out in Arizona was just a friend that I met out there. Um, New Mexico was the friend that I'd go camping and hiking with every weekend Out here, I met a lady, the lady that I was supposed to go bear hunting with. She actually ended up being my cousin's dog breeder. So I went to go pick out a puppy with my cousins and we like, (laughs) they came and picked me up through Moses Lake. And then we went over to the dog breeder's house and we just started talking. She's like, Hey, I'm a single mom of four. I hunt all the time. And I was like, wait, what? (laughs) So she's like, yeah, you can come out bear hunting with me this season if you want. So I took (laughs) her up on that and I wanted to, but it didn't work out. Um, and then, That's so crazy that you can go bear hunting I, there. I know. It's just wild. It's awesome. <laughs> I love it. And then my coworker is the one who does all the duck hunting and stuff like that. So we've just yeah. talked about that at work occasionally. Cool. So, so that's yeah. a big part of the culture out there too is hunting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's huge out here. Hunting and fishing. Like this lake yeah. is, this lake isn't super well known for great fishing, but mm-hmm. there's the Columbia River, which is salmon fishing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's just a lot of other big lakes. Like I drive, cause I'm doing home health right now. So I drive quite a bit every day, but I drive along a ton of lakes on my way up to my first patient's house. And they're all so beautiful. It's insane. Salmon fishing too is super fun. Have you gotten to do any of that? I have. So I, yeah, that was something I was not expecting whatsoever moving out here. I, I didn't even like, I didn't, couldn't even wrap my head around that. I didn't realize that was really a thing that you could do up here. And yeah, like coming from the Midwest, I'm used to like fishing for bass and bluegill. Yeah. That's all I did when I was growing up. <laughs> um, so my coworker actually asked if I wanted to go out salmon fishing. Oh, gosh, it was probably like two months ago now. I was like, yeah, absolutely. That sounds awesome. I don't know what to expect, but that sounds fun. Yeah. Insane. Like I have never had, I've never struggled so much reeling up a fish before. Yeah. It was awesome. I think... I have a video of it and it was like a five, five minute process trying to get the fish in the boat. And every time it got to the top of the water, it, we had the net out and then all of a sudden they would dive back down into the water. I'm like, are you kidding me? My arms are so tired. <laughs> and I know that's probably not even that long to have to reel a fish in for, but it felt like forever. Yeah. And the adrenaline too, like you're just sitting on the boat kind of, um, going around and we were over by a dam. So we were kind of in the boat around in circles, yeah. like the entire time, just, you wait for the fish, basically. And we we're all just sitting and talking. I was eating like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at the time. And all of a sudden we see one of the poles go down. <laughs> so they and get like, Shoot, there's a fish. <laughs> I'm just trying to enjoy my sandwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was still very fun, obviously. Oh my gosh. Uh, did you so much fun? Was this this was on a river then? Yes, this was the Columbia River. Okay, so anybody that's listening right now, look up the life cycle of a salmon. I just think it's so interesting. I don't know if you've ever looked it up before. I, have I was not. just in Alaska about a month ago, and we went salmon fishing and saw oh, them spawning and everything. Jealous. Um, but watching they, their bodies completely change from the time they leave the ocean to the time hmm. they get to their spawning grounds. Like they will, 
depending on the um, the salmon, they completely change color, completely change like their muscle structure, like everything. It's crazy. So anyway, look it up. It's interesting. I know. <laughs> you should. If you have it, you definitely I know, need to. I know. I need to. Yeah. That's pretty bad. <laughs> um, okay. So in Washington, what has been... Like, I know that you said you like to be outside and do all sorts of stuff. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like some of your favorite spots and maybe some like ideas for people that are listening that are wanting to, you know, check out Washington? Yep. So I love going to national parks. So I've tried to do a couple of those. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been to Mount Rainier National Park. I went with a travel couple, um, and we hiked up there just one long hike for the day. And that was beautiful. The hike was. Skyline Ridge, I think. Skyline Trail. Okay. Um, that was a beautiful one. It wasn't crazy hard. I think it was like five and a half or six miles. Does that beautiful, take you though. all the way to the top of Mount Rainier or can you it not get not. to the top so, of Mount Rainier? Okay. It the top of Mount Rainier is like a full on backpacking mountaineering okay. expedition. So it okay. take, <laughs> I think it takes like three days or something like that. And you have to be pretty experienced to do that. Yeah. Um but I loved, like, just being in Mount Rainier is mm -hmm. gorgeous, that whole national park. I didn't realize that mountain was so pretty. But driving yeah. through the park, you can see it pretty much in every view, and it's gorgeous. And then I went to Olympic National Park a couple weekends ago. I actually have two really good friends, one from high school from Illinois and then one from Colorado from undergrad that actually both came out, flew out to see me like two or three weekends ago now. And mm -hmm. we were supposed to go up to North Cascades National Park, but... There's been so many wildfires here this summer that it was pretty smoky that day. And we called the ranger station and they're like, hey, you can't really see too much. It's probably not worth coming up here. Yeah. So I was like, shoot. Well, I planned like all of our hikes for the weekend, all of this stuff. <laughs> so we ended up trying to drive up to North Cascades. And when they told us no, we detoured over to Olympic National Park instead mm -hmm. and just kind of did our own thing that weekend. But over there, there is a hike called Hurricane Bridge, and that one's gorgeous as well. It's all paved, which was not really my cup of tea. I would yeah. rather be more rugged hiking, but it was gorgeous. Like the views were insane from the top, so that was worth it. And how and then, how long of a hike was that one? And would you say like is difficult or? It was definitely steep for sure. Okay. So I would say moderate level of difficulty. Um, but again, the paved roads, like there were a lot of families going up. It just, yeah, just walk a little bit slower if you need to. Okay. Um, and then, so we ended up doing the Olympic National Park, just that whole Olympic Peninsula is way mm -hmm. bigger than I thought it was. So we drove up there. Um, we went to Hurricane Ridge, I think one of the first days, camped up at the more northern part of the park, and then actually took the coast back down. And we stayed at, or we went to Ruby Ruby Lake, or no, not Ruby Lake, Ruby Beach, okay. and that was beautiful. So that's right along the coast. It was super hazy out that day, so it was just very strange because it looked like you were looking at, like, black and white ocean views. Um, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was really neat. Ruby Beach. I haven't heard Ruby of that before. Beach. And it's apparently where they filmed, it's in Forks, Washington, which is, I guess, where they filmed Twilight. I was going to so, say. That's like the big thing out there, I guess. <laughs> that's beautiful. So they actually filmed it there. I don't know if they did it at the beach, but definitely in the town. In the that's town. Like the okay, town cool. It's based off that of or something. Because movie is beautiful. Like the, I think it's, you know, shoot, they're jumping either, from tree it's to tree. It's either filmed out there or it's based off of that town. Okay. One of the two. Yeah. But either well, way, it's beautiful out there. I want to check it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's worth it. So is there any suggestions for people that maybe are going to go visit Washington um, that they want to do some of these hikes, like things that you should have is like, I, I don't know how high these mountains are in these hikes that you're doing, but like, do you feel like it gets really cold when you get farther up? Do you ever run into snow? Is that a problem? Like hiking gear? Is there anything specific you'd yeah. suggest for people? I would say in the summer, it hasn't been bad at all. I was expecting it to get a lot chillier at the top of mountains. I've lived in Colorado before and always at the summits. It's quite chilly. Yeah. Um, but hiking boots, for sure. There's a lot of, like, it's a lot more rocky out here than mm -hmm. I'm used to. Um, a lot of times I would wear my Chacos, my like my hiking sandals in other states. Yeah. And here I definitely wear hiking boots just because it is so much more rugged. Okay. Um, other than that, lots of water, <laughs> bring yeah. layers just in case, but I haven't found any summits of mountains or any trails to be like super chilly. Yeah. Um, definitely a rain jacket out West. It's rainy. 
where yeah. I'm at. I'm pretty much in the desert. They call this town the Desert Oasis uh, <laughs> because it's like a random lake in the middle of a desert. Huh. But it doesn't really rain out here at all. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Always sunny here too, which is great. Yeah. Uh, speaking of rain, I feel like that's just like people just think of Washington and it being rainy. It just mm-hmm. kind of goes together. So is it, you said it's more on the Western side of the state more mm-hmm. like Seattle area, like that kind yep. of thing where it feels like it rains a lot. Is it like exactly. a daily rain or is it? I think it is, but I think it's more of like just a mist. Like it's kind of just misty and fog, more foggy there. Yeah. Um, and then once you pass, I think it has to do with the mountains again and passing that mountain line, then kind of this whole side of the state is pretty dry and clear from all of that. And we get a lot of sun. I think this area is 300 days of sun a year. Wow. It so it's like so Colorado almost. Exactly. Yeah. Which yeah. I love, like I love sunshine. I love being outside. So it makes me happy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not bad on this side of the state at all. But even over there, like when we were at Olympic National Park, we mm-hmm. didn't get any downpour rain or anything like that. It was a little hazy and a little... I don't even know how to describe it. It was definitely more humid out there. So more humid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, have you had a chance to kind of explore Seattle? Have you been around that area very much? I haven't done it a ton. When I okay. played volleyball back in undergrad, we went to Pike's Place Market. Um, I think we played in Oregon and then traveled up to Seattle for a weekend and just did mm-hmm. that. And actually, when my buddies were out visiting, we did the same thing. We went to Pike's Place. And we just walked around the town. There's an awesome area by the water that you can overlook the skyline. And Mm -hmm. that was gorgeous. Like a great place to take pictures if you want a picture of the Seattle skyline. Um, And then, yeah, we just walked around. The market was already closed by the time we got there that evening. because we were just really there for dinner and exploring a little bit. And we went to an awesome pizza place. And it was just a good time. Yeah. Why is Pike's Place so, um, I I feel like people talk about that all the time. Is it just, it's like a fish market, right? Yeah. It's, it's kind of a market for everything. I mean, it is a fish market, but they have vendors of all sorts, like a lot of arts and crafts and coffees and jewelry, a whole bunch of different things. But I think the biggest thing they're known for is the fish market side of it, throwing the fish. So they will throw salmon back and forth and they like catch it every time. I'm like, how do you, I can hardly hold up a fish without it sliding out of my hands after I catch it, let alone tossing it in the air to the other person. So it's pretty pretty impressive. Um, Did you get a chance? I don't know if you're a coffee drinker. I know Seattle is kind of known for coffee, but they have the original Starbucks there. Did you ever get to go there? So I actually did that when I was playing volleyball. We went there as a team that day. So yes, I did get to see it. (laughs) I went a few years ago and I was like surprised. You'd think it was going to be like this big kind of landmark, which it is, Uh but it's, there's not really like a lot of places to like sit or anything. It's kind of like a walk in, walk out. Exactly. And it's not that big either. I was expecting it to be like bigger and all of this, but yeah, Yeah. definitely a tourist attraction. There's always a line outside of it. (laughs) I mean, it's Starbucks. I was sold. I was in. I was like, let's check it out. I'm in. I'm here for this. You have to. Well, you're there. Might as well. (laughs) Um, Do you feel like since uh, living in Washington, you've been able to kind of get involved in the community and do, you know, different things with groups and all that? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my, I almost think that's one of my favorite parts about traveling is just like getting into the communities everywhere I go. So actually out here, One of my first weekends I was here, I was coming out of the grocery store and there was a Boy Scout and his dad and they had a table all set up. They were taking food donations and I started talking to them and they're like, oh, you're new to the area. We, Anyways, we just got to talking. They're like, hey, you're new to the area. Um, I told them what I do for a living and they're like, oh, well, we have to get our merit badge for first aid. Like, is that something that you'd want to come teach the boys? And I was like, wow, it's interesting, but that sounds like fun. Like. (laughs) Why not? So I ended up going over there, helping them with their first aid merit badge. We went on like an outdoor retreat trip that they do every month. So it was a big camping trip up in the mountains. Um, But yeah, I'm pretty much like a little co-leader of the Boy Scout troop in town. How fun is that? (laughs) It's a lot of fun. (laughs) Okay. What's the age group? I want to know all this stuff. It's like, (laughs) gosh, I think it's like 10 to 14. 10 to 14. Yeah. 
Are they're they young. just like super pumped about you being there? And they're like, <laughs> they asking have a lot you of questions. Fun. They, yeah. <laughs> they will only call me Dr. Steph. And I'm like, guys, you don't have to do that. And they're like, but Dr. Stephanie, because I always come straight from work. I come from work in my scrubs. I go straight yeah. to Boy Scouts. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun though. I enjoy it. That's so fun. Um, and then you did but, camping trips with them. Yes. And oh my gosh. So we've only done, I've only got to go on one camping trip so far with them. They have another one coming up, but I am actually going to be out in Las Vegas for travel con. Yeah. Um, but the first camping trip, so I was there, <laughs> like it was right after I was done teaching first aid. We had a couple more things to go over in our packet for first aid that trip. Mm-hmm. And the very first night they were all playing capture the flag, like having an awesome time. It was before it even got dark out. And one of the kids, <laughs> he, he hits his leg like on this PVC pipe that got torn off by one of the cars driving up the bridge. So he smashes his leg into the PVC pipe. <laughs> and PVC pipes, when they break, they're sharp. Yeah. So he smashes his leg into that, like falls off this little bridge, hits his back on the bridge. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not what I came here for. But no. <laughs> sure enough, he like limps over to us. His leg is gushing and we had to do first aid right there and his dad was like in the military at one point and has done all of the combat wounds and stuff like that but it was bad so we had to bandage it up pretty good apply a lot of pressure and then oh my he had, his dad had to take him to the er that night to get stitches because it was so bad uh, <laughs> it was awful it was like <laughs> so yeah they a got real, real real world first aid experience. exactly we're like okay boys this is you got to see it firsthand <laughs> here you go <laughs> This is not a drill. <laughs> I know. And then sure enough, they like all still ran around after. I'm like, okay, you're 10 to 14 year old boys. It makes sense. Uh, they didn't listen I don't know if I can well, handle that. Fun. I don't like the blood. I don't like the blood. All the yeah. power to you, but I don't love it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was an interesting experience for sure. Oh my gosh. Were all the other boys like freaking out? Some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them like couldn't even look at it. We're like, okay, well you should be backing up anyways. Cause we need our space to work on this poor leg. Yeah. I'd be like uh, with the boys that couldn't look at it on the other side, <laughs> trying to calm them down. Yes. And that boy came up to me last week and he goes, Dr. Stephanie, look at my scar. And he like pulls up his pant leg and he has a huge scar on his leg now. And it's like, you should just tell people you got attacked by a shark because that's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> exactly. He'll probably have a good scar. It'll be great. Exactly. If you're listening, yep. tell people it's a shark. <laughs> um, okay. So as far as Washington goes, has there been any like special foods or restaurants or anything that has been kind of fun and new to try? So I honestly don't go out to eat a ton. I like to try to save my money on that as much as I can. Yeah. But Leavenworth, Washington, I don't know if you've ever heard of Leavenworth, but it's like this really cute Bavarian town. It looks like you're in Germany. Um, There's beautiful mountains behind it. And I will say they have really good food in general, Mm -hmm. but... I like going to breweries too. So <laughs> I yeah. I find out a lot of I find a lot of breweries wherever I go. They have a great brewery called Icicle Brewery. Um and then just like their German sausage and stuff like that at different restaurants in town is really good. And there's yeah. a wonderful ice cream place there too. <laughs> Big into <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> um yeah, it's a really it's just a cute place to go visit for a weekend. And I took my yeah. grandparents there when they came to visit. My parents got to go there. Um I try to bring friends there when I can, just because it's only like an hour and 30 to an hour and 40 minutes away. And there's beautiful hiking over there as well. Yeah. Um, Other than that, I will say there was a really good pizza place in Seattle that I think I talked about. It was called the Alibi Room, I think. And it's over by, like in the Pikes Place Market, there's that gum wall, if you've ever heard of it or saw it. Yeah, I have. I've seen it before. Like pictures of it. Kind of gross. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> but if you go like through the gum wall alley or whatever, the pizza place was right there, and that was a really, really good place to eat. Um, I ha- yeah, other than that, I haven't done too much besides other yeah. breweries. There was a brewery that we just went to last weekend um, in Cleelum, and that was called Drew Brew, and that was really good. Okay. And then there's a little brewery in our town, or in my town, called Squirrel Fight Brewery. So. That's the Squirrel thing. Fight Brewery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like these Some two of these owners. Brewery I, names. <laughs> I know. The two owners used to be really good friends and they were like, I guess, home brewing in their backyard or something. And all of a sudden they see these two squirrels fighting and they were trying to come up with their name at the time. And that's what they named it. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> it works. Perfect. <laughs> it's a fun place to hang out. So that's okay. 
Um, so how much longer are you going to be at your current location? So I actually just signed on for a second contract here. I will be oh, here yay. until the end of November. End of November? Okay. Yep. I figured, I mean, I really enjoy my job here. I'm doing home yeah. health here and it's just an awesome group to work with and yeah. I have great coworkers, but I figured it's also hunting season and I have that land or not the land, but I have permission to hunt on land up north of here. So kind of yeah. by the Spokane area. So I figured while well, it's hunting season and I like where, where I'm at, where I'm living, all of that, I would stay for another contract. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything you want to do before you leave Washington? I mean, I could see you maybe staying again or going somewhere else in Washington. <laughs> I, it sounds great. I honestly could too. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> but is there any like other Washington like hot spots that you want to check out before, I, I guess, moving on to another state? Mm-hmm. I definitely want to get up to North Cascades. That's like a huge goal of mine. I don't know yeah. how it's going to work though, now that it's going to get cold here soon. And with hunting season, like I definitely, so my biggest thing is really be out for hunting season. I want to go out for duck and deer this yeah. year, um, but up to North Cascades would be great. And then also I want to get my skis out. I have, I travel with my skis everywhere I go and I want to go snow skiing this year. And I've heard yeah. that there's decent places around here to go. So I think for I'll sure. try to do that too. Yay. Washington. Yeah. So fun. I love it. Yeah. Um, so do you have any suggestions, I guess, like final kind of words of wisdom for anybody that's interested in doing an assignment in Washington? I would say just like this state has so much to offer, no matter who you are. There's the whole city side of it. There's the country living. There's rainforest out here. There's desert. Like you can pretty much find anything in this yeah. state, which is awesome. <laughs> and I like I always thought Washington like like we talked about before, all you think about really with Washington is everyone says it's rainy all the time. And yeah, I mean, in the rain, there's not very many fun things to do in my opinion. So, yeah, <laughs> but there's, it's so much different than I was expecting and I really enjoy it. Yay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with us about Washington and your travel experience. And hopefully people will get to go and check out some of these places. I want to yes. go check out. Yes. Go to Harmonia. Leavenworth for sure. Yeah. And Leavenworth. Yes. Leavenworth and then North Cascades. Yeah, North Cascades is definitely one I want to get to. Yay. (laughs) We'll talk to you soon. Thank (laughs) you so much. You're welcome. Bye, Darian. Bye. And that brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in to I Need Travel Therapy. To learn more about today's episode, make sure to explore the show notes at medtravelers.com slash I Need Travel Therapy. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a guest. If you're a therapist interested in traveling, visit medtravelers.com to explore nationwide travel therapy job offerings and to learn about the amazing benefits that MedTravelers has to offer. Also, a very special thanks to producer Jonathan Carey, assistant producers Katie Schrauben and Sam McKay, and Aiden Dykes for the music and editing. See you next time, travel fam. Travel fam.